Hello, you guys. Welcome back to Let's Deal With It. Well, I'm excited. Today is my birthday. I am 52 years old. Wow. The years have flown by, let me tell you, and look like they're going even faster. Amen? And I know why that is, because Jesus is soon to return. And I know he is, you all. I have no doubt about it. Look at my hair still sticking up, <laughs> even though I did it. Um, I know he's coming coming back soon. And you all, I want to encourage you guys. I'm in my garage. I want to encourage you guys to uh, keep the faith. Do not look back. Do not give up. Do not draw back. Let us keep and continue pressing towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. When I tell you there is a spirit of religiosity in most churches today, there are you all. There are. I want to encourage you guys. I know what it is to want to go and fellowship and do what the Bible says. Do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together, especially as we see the day drawing closer. And you all best believe Jesus is coming. He could come now. He could come in a week, two weeks, three weeks, a month. He could come right when the ball dropped in New York City. The bottom line, you guys, he's coming. He's coming just as sure as I'm sitting here telling you all he's coming. Uh, I just wanted to come by real fast because I am going to celebrate my day. Uh, my day. I did have a beautiful day with my sister. She took me to get my toes done, a pedicure, and I got my nails done. It felt so good, you guys. It just felt good. I hadn't done that in a very, very long time. I normally do everything myself, and that's okay, because if you know how to take care of yourself, you do that. Amen? So anyway, you all, I just want to encourage you guys to um, press. I don't care if you're off, if you felt heavy, depressed, you guys do not give up. Get back up and get back on your knees. Amen. Draw close to the Lord. Do you all hear me? Because this is it. Guys, we're going home. I know you guys say, wow, Sister Marsha, you always say that and he still has not come. Guess what, you all? I believe with everything that is in me, the reason why Jesus haven't come is because so many souls have, are still going to get saved. I don't know the number, but people are coming in. We may not know who they are, but I'm telling you guys, Jesus is coming and he's delaying because he's that merciful. He's that good. He's that kind. He's that compassionate. Let us do what the Bible say. It said, well, I'm hungry. I haven't had nothing, tea, nothing. Let us do what the Bible say. Wait patiently for our Lord. Amen. And I want to thank whoever has been praying for my skin. Please keep praying for me. It's getting better and better. I still get attacked, but guess what? I don't care. You guys know I don't care. Anyway, so yes, you all, let's keep praying for our unsaved um adult children keep believing for them keep holding on i tell you we are man i think brother anthony says the low decedent church i think that's the one he says but it doesn't matter so many churches are functioning in the flesh it's un you all it's mind-blowing it's mind-blowing they're calling it the Spirit of God. They're calling it the Lord. But you all, let me tell you something. The Bible says where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Amen. You all hear me. And another thing, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's love. And if you are not experiencing the authentic love of Jesus Christ when you go to church, I don't know why y'all keep going. I, I wouldn't. Y'all know me. But nevertheless, I just want to thank the Lord because he has his true beloved saints uh, like scattered. Amen. I'm telling you guys, when that Bible say uh, the path that leads to righteousness, 
that is narrow and few find it, you got a whole lot of people thinking that they're going to be caught up, but they're not. I, I would not, you guys know I don't lie. And when I make mistakes or if I'm off, you guys know I admit it. Listen to me, you all. Listen to me. I don't care how beautiful you are. I don't care how fine you are. I don't care how nice you dress, what car you wear. If you are, have a title or a position over your name, letters before and after your name, a uh, a PH and an MD and a doctor and you guys, Jesus is coming for the pure in heart and who has clean hands. The, the pure in heart and clean hands. Yes, the Bible says the pure in heart, they're going to see the Lord. They're going to see the Lord. And you know people who have the spirit of Christ in them. Number one, they love the Lord first. And out of their love for God, they learn to love themselves and others. Um, you all, I'm sitting here telling you the truth. Don't be deceived by people being accepted by other people, by what they drive, their, their titles. You all don't do it. Do what Jesus said. Judge my children by the fruit they bear. Jesus! It doesn't matter. I'm telling you all. So many of these churches are dead here. They're operating in the flesh. They think they're not. But I'm telling you, there are indicators to know where the spirit of the Lord is flowing freely. Number one, there's the true authentic love for Jesus and for others. Do you all hear me? So many people are operating out of emotionalism and out of what they think they've accomplished. And you all, when that trumpet blow, I bet you God not going to say, well, let me let them in because they're a doctor. Well, now she got to get in because she's a president of a company. Well, he got to get in because he did this and he did that. You all, you all, don't be deceived. Know the Lord for yourself. The Lord knows those who are his because he said, if you love me, you will obey me. He said, keep my commandments. That's how I'm going to know that you love me. There are so many people out here going through the, I call it emotionalism and religious. You guys, it's so, it's mind blowing out here today. It's mind blowing. They're just going through how it says what it says. Uh, I'm trying to think of something, you guys. Um, they have a form of godliness, denying the power of God. You guys, I would rather go visit churches here and there than to be in a church that is dead. And, and they think they are alive because they get excited emotionally or because man think they're good and man say they all right. You all, we going to know who was all right. Because guess what? They going up in the rapture. And that's why the Lord says you don't want to uh, be ashamed at his coming, his return. Amen. You do not want to be ashamed at his return. You all, we are in the last days. And people think they're doing things by the spirit of God and it's all flesh. And I'm telling you, I, ooh, we, it is very heavy out here. A spirit of religiosity has taken over. People don't even care that that's how they're, what they're under in leadership is a, it's their flesh. Jesus said, are you so foolish to believe what I've started in the spirit, you can finish in the flesh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Oh, I feel my help. Most churches are operating in the flesh and they don't think that they are because they're successful. Uh, they're getting accolades from man. You all, we going to know the true servants. We going to know the true saints because they're going to be leaving. They're going to be taken up 
in this harvest. Like Brother Anthony, I love how Brother Anthony is saying harvest. Not that we can't still say rapture. And I like to say the bride. I like to say he's coming for his bride. And see how there's neither male nor female in the kingdom of the Lord? Because a man can never be a bride in the natural. But those who are hidden in the cleft of the rock, whether male or female, those are his bride. Do you hear me? That's his bride. And you all, we about to go. We... And I love how the word says, occupy until he comes. Amen. 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 Occupy. Don't give up, you all. And I want to say a special prayer right now for a sister's daughter's their names is Hannah. You guys remember her older, older daughters in your prayers, Hannah, and I believe Ariana. I want you to know, sister, ever since you've asked me to pray for your daughters, I've been praying for them every day. You all, when we care about other people's children, whether they're younger or older, God will see about our children. Do you all hear me? Do you all hear me? Yes, Jesus. So remember Hannah and Ariana in your prayers. And I want you saints to know, and Brother Patrick, in any way that I could help you, I will reach out to you by way of my um, email. I'll leave my email address. I think I did. But if that doesn't work for you, leave me a uh, comment here and I'll respond right away. Whatever I can do to convince your daughter to love the Lord and to know that he loves her, brother, I will do it. Amen, brother. I love my both brother Patrick's on here. I pray my other brother Patrick is doing great. I know you guys are. I sense it. I sense it in my heart and in my spirit. I pray for you both every day. Sister Juliet, Nalia, I hope I'm saying your name right, Sister Nalia. Nelia, Nelia, I keep wanting to say Nelia, but I'm going to get it. Don't give up on me, sister. I love you. And by the way, I showed my sister your picture on your album. I think it's your um, your CD cover. And I introduced her to your music. She loves it. She said, oh, I got to start listening to this because she loves sultry, like jazz, like music too. Jazz sound. And I love jazz after gospel. But anyway, a couple of you sisters on here, I have a very special gift to sing you, Sister Nelia. Um, it's beautiful. It's a, it's called a makeup holder. So I'll be reaching out to you too, Sister Juliet. I'm working on yours. And I think Sister uh, Gina, uh, Clarinda, Sister Clarinda, I would love to sing you one too. I will show you guys it is so beautiful. You're gonna love it. So anyway, I will reach out to you ladies so I can get your address and send it to you. Any case you all, let's pray for um, our sister's daughters, Hannah and Ariella. So Heavenly Father, we wanna thank you that you said when our children are young to train them up in the way that they should go. And when they are older, they will not depart. We thank you, Father, that the word that has been deposited in their spirit person, the spirit man in them will begin to spring up life right now. That word will not lay dormant no, no longer. It will spring up life, salvation, repentance, healing in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for putting people on their path that know you, Holy Spirit, that is full of the Holy Ghost in, in the past of uh, Ariana and Hannah's path, Lord God. You know, I pray that for my Thomas, for my daughter, even for my Judah, but Lord, especially for Thomas and Sarah, the same way you've used me, I know you're going to see about my children. I know it. It's in your timing. I'm at peace. Do I hurt sometimes? Do I cry? Jesus, you know I do, but guess what? I know you're working it out. We cannot lean to our own understanding. 
we must continue to acknowledge you in all our ways and you will direct our path. Amen, Father? Yes, you will. So I thank you for grabbing a hold of their conscience, Holy Spirit, arresting them. Let them have no peace until they say yes, till they surrender to you, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We thank you for victory in these young women's life in the name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, Father, that you will comfort her mother's heart because I know what that feels like. Feels like you're dying. Sometimes feels like your heart is breaking. But Lord, you are the healer of our heart. You are the healer of our souls. And I thank you that they will have no rest, no peace, Father, until they come back to Jesus. In your son's name, I pray this, Father, and I thank you for my brothers and sisters on here. I lift up each and every last beloved saint, asking that you would intervene in our lives where we need you in every area, asking where there is pain, where there is loss, where there is lack. Father, I'm asking that you bless your children. You are a blesser. You are a healer. You are our salvation. You are a provider. You are everything we need you to be and then some. That's why when Moses said, who should I tell them that sent me? You told Moses to tell them, I am whatever we need you to be. I am. You are, Father. So I thank you for my brothers and sisters in Christ. I thank you for touching their lives with a greater revelation of your love, of your peace and your joy that we will not give up, Lord, that we will be better than we've ever been for you. Yes, that we will go stronger and harder for the kingdom of God for souls. It's hot, y'all. It's 88 degrees. So we just thank you, Father, and we praise you with all that is in us. We thank you, Lord, that you are doing a new thing in these last and evil days. You're going to do phenomenal things through the hearts that are humble, not the proud, not the arrogant. And boy, do I see that in most of these churches in this region, nothing but arrogance and proud proud pride no 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 mm -mm. i don't care if you are successful that don't mean you're successful in the spirit so lord i just thank you and i praise you with all that is in me in the name of jesus hallelujah hallelujah so i thank you father in jesus's holy name thank you father thank you for your mercy ain't it look i'm sweating like a pig that's okay. I thank you, Father God, for breakthroughs. I thank you, Father, in Jesus' holy name, for making a way where there seems to be no way for healing and deliverance, Father. Oh, yes. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' holy name. I love you all. Let's not give up. Let's press in. Do not give up, y'all. We are almost there. You can feel it. His return is so near. And does that mean we stop living? We stop dreaming, doing things that we think we can't do, we want to do? No. Amen. Amen, y'all. Let's just press. I love you guys. Woo! It is hot. Woo, I wouldn't want to go to hell. Do you hear me, y'all? I, mm -mm. I said, no, Jesus. <laughs> it's burning up. I'm just trying to get a breeze on me. Here it come. Praise the Lord. Look at my gray yard. I, I didn't dye my hair. Praise the Lord. So anyway, I love you guys. Let's press towards the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Let's not give up, okay? If you've fallen down, get back up. Amen. The Bible says seven times does a good man fall. Seven times. Amen. Get back up. And it says seven because no more falling after that. Amen. Seven is the number of completion. Let's get up in the Holy Spirit. Let's get up in the joy of the Lord. He is our strength. This is why we need to read the word every day, you all. Every day. Do you hear me? Read God's word every day. It's our strength. Amen. It's our restrainer. It's our hope. It's our faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Oh, yes. We can't do this on our own, you all. I remember my Jewish pastor used to say, you got Christians trying to be Christians without Jesus. Ain't that something? That's what I see. I see a lot of religiosity. People not telling people what they need to hear, even when they don't want to hear it. 
the Bible says, speak the truth in love. There are people with terrible lifestyles out here. People don't want to say it's time for you to come out your sins. It's time for you to repent. You guys, we should not lie to people. The Bible says, lie not one to another. I would rather somebody say something that's tough for me to hear than to tell me, you all right, you doing good, you doing, and God knows I'm just as raggly and toe up and backslidden as a, not even a dog, but you know, y'all know what I'm talking about. Just as backslidden as I can be, I would rather hear the truth. I would rather hear the truth from somebody that I know love me than to listen to the lies coming through a religious person's mouth. You guys, oh, thank you for the breeze, Jesus. Thank you, thank you. You all, we don't wanna, we don't, we don't wanna live a life of lies. Tell the truth to people, especially when they ask you. Say, now what I'm about to say ain't gonna be easy to hear, but I love you and I want to tell you the truth. It's so sad. You guys, so many people are in a lot of trouble. Do you hear me? They really, you guys. That's okay. I, God knows it's time for me to release these words. It's time. I waited. I waited to the right time. Amen. So you guys, I love you all. I'm going to go take a nap, go out to dinner or something. I had a beautiful day with my sister yesterday, my biological sister, my sister in Christ. It was wonderful. And I really appreciate her and I thank her so much. Yes, you all want to give you guys a testimony. When the Bible said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Let me tell you guys, there was a sister in Christ. She uh, broke up with her boyfriend. And um, he obviously must have purchased her some things in her house. And he took them. And um, I went to see about the sister, a sister in Christ. And it hurt me. I didn't know that. I didn't know that he had done that to her. And when I walked into her um, home, I saw the only thing she had in her living room was a chair. And y'all know, if y'all have been following me, y'all know my testimony about my cousin Tawanda. How when I saw her sleeping on the floor, she didn't have her furniture anymore. Sprung into action, got her two beautiful couches, man. I wanted them couches myself. <laughs> <laughs> they were beautiful. God bless my cousin. Lord Jesus. I, don't cry, Marsha. Anyway, stay focused. So this sister, uh, her things was taken out of her home by this individual. And it just hurt my heart so bad. I said, now, Lord, if you can help me to do it for my cousin, you can help me to do it for this sister in Christ. How about you guys a couple of days later? I was going to, um, what was I going to go do? I was going to go get me some nail polish for my birthday. That's what I was going to do. Yes, indeed. And I had already, from the moment that I saw the situation, said, man, I, I really want to do something for this sister. I really do, Lord. I want to fix this for her in the name of Jesus. This is horrible. And so the Lord saw my heart my heart's desire. When the Bible says he will give you your pure heart's desire, I'm telling you all, he'll do it. So anyway, I go to Ross to look for some nail polish. And um, soon as I got out the car, you all, I seen this furniture store. It's a brand new furniture store. And something said, there you go. Go get it. You got good credit. Go get her some. And I said, oh, wow, okay. So I went in and it was so amazing. When I tell you it went like this, it was nothingness. It was nothingness. Picked out the couch, sent her two colors. The woman got her couch and within, I think, it, I, think I called her on a Tuesday or I was texting her, which color do you like? Uh, and she got her couch this Friday. It's a sectional, it, it, when I tell you guys it's sharp, I, I like that couch myself. <laughs> Praise God. I'm telling you when the Bible said it is more blessed to give than to receive. Oh, I'm telling you, it's the truth. Anyway, I just thank God. That's what it's about, you all. So many people just want to get and get. And they got, folks got plenty. And not helping a dog. Not helping any true saints who really need help. But guess what? That's not going to be said of me. Amen. Let that not be said of you all. And I want to thank my sisters 
who sent money for those babies. I think I have one more set of pictures to put up about the babies getting their, you know, the young children getting their flip flops. You all, it was so beautiful. I gave the rest of them out last week. And now I'm working on school clothes. I'm trusting God that I can get, I don't care if it's one outfit a piece. I know God can do this for me. I know he's gonna do it, amen. And they was asking me, they was like, Miss Marsha, you gonna get us some school clothes? I said, you guys pray for Miss Marsha, pray for me. <laughs> and I know the Lord is gonna do it. Anyway, guys, I love you. Like I said, I'm gonna go in here, eat a little something, take a little power nap, probably go out to dinner. Um, God is good, you all. Let's hold on, okay? Let's not give up. Let's put out love. Let's be kind to strangers, amen? Let's just smile. A smile can help somebody bless somebody's day, amen? And I just pray that the Holy Spirit will begin to move through hearts that are pure and hands that are clean to give us words of knowledge out in the supermarket, Walmart, going to the grocery stores, Wherever we are, you guys believe for the Holy Spirit to use you powerly, powerful to um, speak a word in somebody's life, to use you in the most pro profound way because there are people hurting. I mean, I have looked at people in church. They look suicidal. They need a little help and people pray for them and say, go and be warm. And there are people who are hurting out here and it's in people's. If I can go and get somebody a whole sectional and be buying things for children and I struggle myself, shame on those who have much and do nothing, do little. Do you guys hear me? Yes. And then you can be doing something, but if you're doing it with the wrong motives and intentions, it's going to be in vain. It's going to be in vain. So anyway, you all find someone to bless. Okay. Bless somebody who is a blessing. Amen. Y'all know I'm going to do it. You know, I'm going to do it. So anyway, you all, I love you guys. A little sleepy, a little tired, but nevertheless, God is faithful. He is so good. Y'all see my grades, boy, the sun make them pop. <laughs> That's okay. I love you all. God bless you. And I'll be back with uh, Matthew chapter 7 in Hebrew. I'm going to read it. And there's a sister or a brother that asked me what type of Bible I use. I have two. I use a King James and I also have a Hebrew Bible. I will hold it up in my next teaching video so you can see it, okay? I love you guys. It's raining. Wow. That's okay. Praise God. I love you guys. Bye-bye.